All right, welcome to uh, another session here at the main room. And uh, the topic that we have proposed is to talk about future releases of JDKs, the JDK cadence, what migration strategies, what you, your team, and your company may be thinking or doing to cope with the, uh, the new release train or, I don't know, future releases of the JDK. And to start this thing, I'm actually not moving yet, even to JDK 9. Most of our projects, our customers, are stuck in Java 8. And uh, there, is no, there are no plans whatsoever for now to do the migration. They just, they don't know what's coming, pretty much. So I'll get mine out of the way pretty quickly because I'm an Android developer. So I mentioned before we're basically stuck on Java 6 or 8, depending on your um, Android API support. Um, so for me, it's going to be interesting actually what happens with, there's no way they can keep up with the release cycle. So are they just going to completely ditch Java um, entirely and maybe move to uh, like Flutter or Fuchsia? And from Google's perspective, supporting Android or Kotlin native, who knows? Um, it's kind of our ties are, hands are tied in this case, so it's kind of that's why I, I proposed the talk saying Oracle is maybe digging their own grave in in this case. Or there's always there's on, ongoing disputes, I guess, with Android, Google support. So maybe this is actually a deliberate choice in this particular case. I don't know. So. <laughs> So, but I think uh, what should happen uh, for most companies is that uh, upgrading a Java version should be as easy as updating a dependency in your POM file. It should be a uh, one click and just roll it out, give it a try. That's, that's, but most infrastructures are not ready for that yet, I think. But that's what should happen and Oracle says it's not our problem. Uh, it's it's the problem of the, 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 the users that they should try to keep up with us. Maybe I can uh, pick up here. I work for a company um, and now we are actually poking at uh, migrating to Java 10. Um, and we found there are several issues. So some you can work around, but uh, some of the libraries are actually not ready yet and that's kind of blocking us. No. Just to answer, um, uh, by example, if you use something like Travis, uh, in Travis you can, uh, for, for doing the CI, you can choose if you want one particular GDK or if you say open GDK dash uh, early access or something like this, I don't remember exactly the name, it will build with the latest thing. Building with the latest is not a problem. For most companies, uh, um, the company will not go through 9, 10, but follow the um, long-term stab release. Basically, it will be 7, 8, 9, yeah. uh, so 7, 8, 11, three. <laughs> Yeah. So, so this is great for companies and organizations that can use freely, well, not necessarily freely, uh, open services such as Travis and CloudBees that whether you have a private or a public repository, you can use these tools. But there are companies that will never get close to those tools for two reasons. One, they have no idea they exist. Second, privacy concerns. So yeah. there's no way they can use these tools. But hold on a second. Uh, the thing is that is, is one to say, I, I is one to see I have a platform such as Travis that allows me to run code in, in a particular version of JDK, even early access. But another thing is to say, does my code comply with what is needed to be run for that particular version? Say, if you run JDEPS right now on any project that depends on Google Juice or Guava, it is not JDK 9 compatible. They still cut 14 usages of some MISC unsafe. So in Java 11 or newer versions, this library alone is going to break your project. And like this, there are many other libraries out there.
Did I break Remy? Sorry, you, you said that Juice use? Juice uses Guava 25-1 JRE, which is still uses some, some misc unsafe in 14 different places. Ah. So basically it seems that Juice is an open source project and that tomorrow we have a hacking session? <laughs> oh, it's open source. Yeah, it's uh, Google. For, for those that are, not, that are listening to the recording, I have air quotes around open source. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I have developed some libraries on Android. I know what, what it means. Right, so, so the thing is that we have a problem of a platform or, or something that allows you to run the code in a particular version, but also making sure that not just your dependencies, but also your code does not have any ties to restricted or not, or, or APIs that should not be used going forward. Yeah. Currently, with Java 11, you can use SunMisk, you, SunMisk unsafe. I mean. But you shouldn't. You should not. For, but, for but most people. Yeah, you should not, but you can, which means that if it's not in your code, but in a dependency, you can wait. You, I mean, you can still use Juice with Java 11. There is no problem. <laughs> I think the issue is here, how mature is used in this case? Do they make, uh, do, they, do they really want to stay behind or are they waiting for another library to do exactly the same thing as they are doing, but the correct way? No idea. And, and for most of the company, you should migrate to something that use Docker. It simplifies, it simp because it simplifies a lot, a lot, a lot of things like testing on, di on diverse environment. It's Pfizer. The, the, the migration is not that easier and that easy. But uh, from the CI point of view, it's far easier to use Docker than anything else. I don't see how that is related to, to the migration. Yes, I agree. Moving to Docker is fine. Um, but with the issue we, issues we encountered, they're completely unrelated. Uh, another example is uh, you get a compile time error uh, when you're using Liquibase. Liquibase is a tool for incrementally um, updating the, the database. Well, that's completely unrelated to Docker. Um, it's something for the hack day on Friday, probably. <laughs> There's an issue uh, open. It's uh, Liquibase Core 3262, if anyone's interested. So it's known already, but well, for a company who wants to use this tool, and they're not moving away from Liquibase. We don't see an alternative. Yeah, in that case, you have to patch the code mm -hmm. by yourself. I mean, um, I have done this kind of thing, which is wait, 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 and at some point, the cost of waiting is more than the cost you, you will invest for yeah. fixing the issue. Yeah, I was about to suggest if someone has any war stories or experiences doing migrations from Java 8 to the next version of Java, uh, this will be a, a great time to, to share those. I'd love to. Um, in, in my previous job, uh, I have done some, uh, some testing on Java 9 and some, uh, yeah, to, to be able to, to run the product, I need to uh, open a lot of modules uh, uh, and exports and everything to, to don't have to recompile to Java 9 but just to have a, a, my application compile on a JDK 8 and run on JDK 9 and maybe just just the, the this step that needs to be uh, it's it's a it's a large step but you need to uh, at least upgrade to runtime JDK 9 or 10 or 11 and then all the other JK should be uh, easier to upgrade. I mean, that's, that's the, the nine that is the, the steeper curve to, to, to upgrade. But if you are at least able to run 
your application on a runtime, uh, the the rest should be okay uh, and easier, maybe. So just to be clear, um, every everything can stay on the class path. The class path won't go away. So you don't have to add a module descriptor if you want to use uh, Java 9. So that's something I quite often hear, but it's not true. Okay, I will not show any s war stories yet. We are planning to migrate to JDK 10 for a reason because we want to run in Docker. And if you want to run Docker, you want at least Java 10 because then it, the JVM understands all the ergonomics and C groups and what stuff, what not. That's not the point. I wanted to bring topic to the, the beginning just to make clear that people are aware, okay, there's a six, minute, a six months release cycle started from JDK 9, we got 10, and with every new release, the previous release is end of life. So whenever we're talking about JDK 9, we're talking about end of life release. So currently it's JDK 10, in September it's going to be JDK 11. And every three years we're going to have a LTS release, long-term support, which is supposed to be support for three years. So uh, JDK 11 will be such until JDK 17, three years from now. But now there is a catch. There is a new information which I learned a couple of weeks ago. Is that it is starting with JDK 11, Oracle JDK is not free to use in production. Oops. Which means that's, that's a big thing for, for, for a lot of companies, like, like all three or four companies that worked before, we, we used to deploy Oracle JDK. We, didn't, we knew that there is an IBM one or Azul one, but we stick with Oracle JDK. Now everybody is going to be moving to open JDK builds. And the question is, is vanilla OpenJDK builds from Adobe OpenJDK is good enough? Do you want to go with Zulu uh, from Azul? Do you want to go with the one from the Red Hat? Um, will there be any support, backports and stuff like that? This is awesome. Yes, exactly. So, so one thing, um, it is true, the new news is that you can use Oracle JDK for development and testing for free, but if you want to run it in production, you may need to pay a license depending on certain conditions. A LTS only applies to Oracle JDK, not to OpenJDK. OpenJDK is free every six months. LTS means nothing to OpenJDK. It's only for Oracle JDK. Unless there is the OpenJDK event. Who, unless there is the OpenJDK vendor who agrees to support a particular OpenJDK family for you. Like, I don't know, uh, Azul has the support contracts for OpenJDK for different versions. Red Hat provides support for OpenJDK uh, within its RHEL subscriptions, etc., etc. So there is the upstream OpenJDK, which is six month release cycle, but this is what Oracle thinks about that. So the, the actual support cycle for the OpenJDK builds depend on the vendor of the particular OpenJDK build. And all this LTS, as you said, thing is only about, um, well, most of the things that are said about JDK LTSs, they actually imply Oracle JDK builds. And again, the, there could be vendors who built downstream rebranded versions of OpenJDK, like Zoo, for instance, with their own support terms, with their own support you know, timelines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes, um, there's a number of uh, groups that and companies that build downstream OpenJDK. We build something called Zulu, which is vanilla OpenJDK just repackaged. There is Adopt OpenJDK. There is uh, Volker Simonis builds SAP machine, submachine, and um, uh, a few others. The question, so if you wanted, if all, all you needed is just latest updates and just pat, build it and, and, and install it, um, that is actually something easy, something that most people, most engineers, at least senior engineers, can do themselves. Uh, the question is, what do you do if you see a bug or a problem? And uh, yeah, the, in, in the past, people were kind of had this luxury of just uh, relying that Oracle will fix it timely for free and everybody will get it. Um, but now I guess it's the time to realize that engineering time costs money. 
And so the question is, well, your, the options are either to migrate to the latest GDK, and if the problem isn't fixed, well, hope that the next GDK will, will contain it. Or you basically go to, well, you can still file a bug in OpenGDK, but it will be under some fairly low priority, I would assume. Or what you do is you contact one of the vendors and they basically, for fee, they will, they will fix it much, much quicker. I would say that any like serious business uh, with big appliance would like to be covered with some sort of support contract. So they go to one of the vendors and this is basically a sort of like a distributed support team, I would say. And um, um, I guess that's where the business will be, will be going. Okay. Following a little bit up with the other question that Dimitri had, He's, he asked the question, is vanilla OpenJDK good enough or should I go with the others? Well, I know that the other JVM vendors here will have their say, but Oracle has promised to, to make sure that Oracle JDK going into the future and OpenJDK are exactly the same thing in terms of binary compatibility, in terms of features. The Oracle JDK might give you something extra. They might give you uh, the, uh, the capabilities of support. But in terms of the basis, what Open JDK delivers is exactly what Oracle JDK will deliver. But, but for six. Uh, not the Open JDK 6. The Open JDK 6 is a real monster. Don't use it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and the thing about binary compatibility thing, it was m almost always the case past GDK 6 because OpenGDK is the reference implementation for Java SE. So whatever downstream distribution you have, it has to be compatible with this reference implementations because that's what where the, all the GSR reference implementations land. And this is basically the golden GDK uh, that you have. So when you hear about Oracle saying that they would like to have their or or downstream Oracle GDK builds and Open GDK builds more or less the same, they are actually talking about backporting, uh, sorry, porting or open sourcing the non essential GDK features into upstream OpenGDK, like we saw with JFR, GMC, ZGC, et cetera, et cetera. App CDS. App CDS, right. Um, some all these features that were kind of the add-ons in the downstream builds of Oracle, um, just just there, uh, put them into OpenGDK. So is vanilla OpenGDK good enough? For most usages, yes, it's 99% the same thing. If you look ever so closely how Oracle GDK and OpenGDK builds differ, there are at least one major difference that Oracle GDK ships with a proprietary font engine, which I believe Oracle is kind of in the bind. It cannot open source it because it's proprietary. Yeah, it's historic, yeah. And there is something else which I couldn't quite remember. There's, this is the second there thing. Was, I think there was something about the either web, oh, well, there was ah. the plugin, the, the plugin which is now deprecated and long gone, but this was pro proprietary as well. Java, any of the other web de deployment technologies? Yeah, so yeah. And also you don't have installer in OpenGDK. You don't have an installer. Yes. Well, this part is fixed by most downstream vendors. I think, uh, well, we, we definitely have a, our own installer. I think some other code vendors as well. Uh, sorry, Alexi, are you saying that if you use OpenJDK, you don't get the Yahoo Ask Bar as part of the installer? Yes. I, I think that is pretty good news for everybody just to try it out, OpenJDK, out of the box. Okay, but. The only thing so far I hear that, that basically you can use OpenJDK. The only thing you, you don't get, you don't get the, the, the fixes and backport of bugs back. That's what, that's what vendors will do. So you have, to, you have to basically migrate every six months. If there are bugs, well. I guess uh, to just to answer my original question about the Android support, I, it seems like the most sensible option would be for them to actually just use OpenJDK instead of whatever they're using. I very much doubt they're going to tie themselves to an Oracle long-term support version on Android. That's just my gut feeling at the moment. Who knows? Yeah, so if you are on, on OpenGDK and you realize that uh, whatever six-month window is, is about to close for support, 
um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your open GDK will just go poof at that point, right? They're still working. Your production still is not broken. So the only question that you have is what to do with the fixes and security fixes at most for that thing. But then you realize that security fixes are still happening in the, in the development of open GDK. So you can actually get these fixes and get them to your build. Now you have several options there. You can have enough internal expertise, like you can hire a guy who will support your internal version of that. And that's what a uh, few big tech companies do now. The, all the major tech giants yeah. actually have in-house yeah, open GDK uh, teams. Yeah, you can have in-house GDK team which kind of does this support for you, or you can hire someone else to do this for you. Yeah, so it's not like, you know, you're not in this uh, Cinderella movie when you see uh, it's midnight and your GDK is, is going poof. No. Um, yeah, uh, but the catch though with uh, like an, a, an option to keep going to, you know, next JDK and 11, 12, 13 is remember there is Dr. Deprecator out there. He comes to jQuery, not this year, but and when he comes, he deprecates something, which means that your, your code that used to work maybe with JDK 11 may not work with JDK 12 because he, Dr. Deprecate decided that it's time to deprecate. Um, so uh, that also usually implies that you need to be up to date with your code. Otherwise, um, it may not automatically work uh, after you do this JDK upgrade. Now, there is actually two Dr. Deprecator. Y you have one and it's uh, twin evil. Because in the GDK, you have two ways to deprecate something. You can deprecate it or you can deprecate it for removal. <laughs> if it's just deprecated, you have time. If it's for removal, it means what it means. Yeah, but the, the, now the catch is that when, we dep when they deprecate for removal, they have stated that there may be one, two, or a few releases, and then it is removed. See, oh, if the deprecation for removal happens in 12, and lots of people say, oh, I'm going to stay in 11 because it's LTS, and remember, LTS is only for Oracle JDK, and gets removed in 15, and then you say, I'm going to keep LTS, so I'll upgrade in 17. Guess what? Your code is broken if it depends on that thing that was is gone. Right. Um, w w when you have the full removal, you have the version, you have the latest version, uh, you have a version number with the full removal. So you know at that point that w w w um, yeah. basically either you, s you, you change every six months, either you use uh, Let's call it LTS, long-term support for what it means, not for. And in that case, you know if it will be removed or not. And there is another thing which is important, is the community. By example, uh, Oracle wanted to remove the support of Java C6 in 11. There was something like four free mails saying it's not a good idea now, it, it should be in 12. And guess what? It will be in 12, not 11. So it's something which is important. You should follow the mailing list. Because if you have something to say, it's too late to say when it's released. It's far better to say, no, it's not a good idea before. Uh, yeah, but I guess the point stands is that uh, you can't just uh, hope from one long-term support release, whether it's Oracle, Azul's, or Red Hat's to another, and hoping that the, it would be a smooth sail between them if you're just oblivious of the potential deprecation changes, uh, non-bug differences between JDK, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the builds in OpenJDK are still a good target for testing because you will face these changes anyway when you decide to migrate. Otherwise, you will be stuck in the same situation how many companies are stuck with 1, 4, 2, and 5, and 6. At this point, they just kind of, the investment they have to make to jump to the modern Java 
when it's not incremental but upfront cost, it's so damn bad. So they are choosing to just pay the companies who built one for two or five or six to them, which is good for us is we, if we are this company. But really, you really don't want to be in that situation. So yes, track it, ad adjust, adapt to it, or voice your concerns that you cannot adapt to it any reasonably. So, so one thing that is, has been circling around in, with this conversation, and I, I don't know if everyone has followed it, is that what we used to have in the past, the free launch of every three years have free upgrades, is gone. And stable API. And stable, yeah, stable API. So either we stay free and move every six months, or we have to pay the price to do the upgrades, the testing, and everything ourselves, or we have to consult with the vendors and shop around who is willing, by some price, to give us the best possible support depending on our needs. So all organizations around the world now have to think about whether they do breakneck speed upgrades every six months or think about something else. Uh, I will, uh, just for the deprecation things, don't spread FUD. If something is uh, deprecated for removal, it means it's actually um, something which is harmful. Like the there, there is processor? No, there is no deprecation for removal for things that are not harmful. It's okay, just so core, deprecated. Core is gone, XML. Uh, it's, so, I mean, they, they might be awful, but no, you might not consider them as core platform, but people coded before as these parts were part of GDK, and now they're not part of GDK. Uh, they're in it, separate it, modules. It's, it's, it's another talk. Uh, during uh, GDK 6, uh, Sun made a very big mistake, which is take part of Java EE and integrate them in Java SE. And what we are saying now, it's the opposite movement. So you know which things will be moved. And when they are moved, they are available on Maven. Just download the things from Maven Central and everything is fine. That's a very nice sentiment, I agree. If you are used to working with open source and you are in an open organization, but there are many organizations out there, believe me, I have worked with some of those, that would not take something that is not coming from the JDK. If it's from the JDK, everything is fine. If it's not, there is a long betting process to figure out if that dependency is suitable because of licensing or so many things. But most of the cases, on security of course, but most of the cases is if it's something external, if it is coming from a well-known respected Java champion or company, they would not take it because it's not part of the Open JDK. So saying that it's okay that that particular module will be hosted on Maven Central and everybody is familiar and happy with using Maven Central, they will still not use it. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, you, you have a vetting process, and it's normal to have a vetting process. That's why you run in your CI the early access, so you know that it's being removed, or if you follow the mailing list, you know that it will be removed, and you start the vetting process now. I guess another twist to the story, and I think it goes back a little bit to, to migration, is that uh, for a lot of businesses, the team that created the original product, the people that knew the, this product, you know, can, can be gone because, well, that's actually a job of programmers to create something once, and if it works well enough, you know, good, one, two, three years passed, the application is still there, and uh, the team may be gone, and it's sort of almost like a DevOps thing now, like in we still want that same functionality, that code was fine, but now we know that there are more security holes being identified, all we need is just security updates. Uh, but, but to hire back again the job, uh, you know, a team of Java developers to create a new release of that product that would be up to, with up to date to uh, the current GDK, whatever is current, uh, may not be a feasible option. In which case, in which case, then the the only resort is actually to buy that support for that old JDK, except for now these things happen a lot rapidly than they used to be. Yeah, but 
you have exactly the same things with Lux and all your dependencies. You, I mean, a, a software, it's something, it, it's like an house. If you don't do the basic maintenance, but, but the problem goes deeper. I mean, application is just one thing, but there is a lot of big banks, insurance companies, I heard universities that buy expensive libraries, and it might be that the company that actually created this library, which is closed source, is not around anymore. So for those companies, it is really an issue because they paid a shitload of money and they can't use it in new versions. Yeah, so now that you realize that you're in this situation, when you shop around for dependencies today, <laughs> It what, doesn't what are you from, looking for from the right past? Now? Yes, of, of course, but uh, you know you want to learn from the past, right? So your pa if your past is that you have the proprietary library that is not maintained by, by anyone and you need to maintain it, so shopping for dependencies today, you would probably shop for the open source dependencies that you can maintain if original maintainers are gone by some in, in ten years from now. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yes. If you have, if you don't have a flexible software that you cannot upgrade, you will have to pay increased maintenance cost, and that maintenance cost could go to paying someone to support all the older GDK, or the Linux kernel, older JLibc, older hardware components, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's the it's not Java specific at all, right? It's the, just the software development process there. Yep. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's exactly, uh, I really like uh, to think of Java as the uh, kernel and distribution. It's exactly that. You have OpenGDK, which is the kernel, and you have several distribution, Oracle GDK, Red Hat GDK, Azure GDK, and, and so on. It's exactly the same way of functioning. So it, it might be it might be surprising. I'm actually not on the bad side here. I, I totally agree with you, and I think it's it's important to actually say yes. You have to get support, um, and it's it's just the problem that it was in the Java world. It was kind of different in the past, and I totally agree with you that if you're looking to new dependencies, it is probably better to choose something where you can say, okay, it is open source, and in the worst case, we can find somebody to actually maintain it. Um, but that doesn't solve the past, and I, I think it's a it's a real problem because maybe a lot of companies don't don't have the the money or the budget to actually now say, hey, cool, um, shit for it it, it, it it went all the way down, right? And we have to pay now. Um, it is just a matter of, of of cost that was probably not planned in into the budget. It's like, again, it's like a Cinderella story all over again. It's just, it's not, no, I mean, it's a good metaphor here. It's just, we have the, uh, in our mind, the notion of bitrot. We actually think that if software is just sitting there on our server, it just rots there and we need to upgrade it just because. Um, there are many companies take the opposite view on that. They say, okay, we have this solution, it works, why in the hell we want to upgrade it? Well, probably, probably security, yes, security fixes. How do we do that if we, this is the proprietary dependency for which we don't have source or maintainers? Um, we we kind of, you know, we have the external fixes for it. We hide it behind the firewalls behind it, behind all sorts of adapters, etc. We complementalize the, pot the potential damage for it. Which is hopefully done already. Yep. Okay, so everybody's talking about the dependencies of their own projects, but we still have uh, to build that project. So, yes, Maven has the same issue, and it's probably worse. It needs to keep up with the pace of Java, and one of the critical libraries we need is, for instance, ASM. And ASM needs to be released every six months, right? That's why currently we use a, a rolling model release. We have changed our. Uh, it's something which is interesting. If you are uh, um, uh, um, maintaining a libraries and the libraries is used by uh, a huge swath of other libraries, uh, you have to keep up with the uh, uh, the GDK. 
and it's not that easy to keep up with a, a six months release. No, that's also the, the things we are seeing. So I really have problems trying to keep every plugin that depends on a specific Java version to keep them up to date. I, I know there are a couple of plugins behind and uh, I'm just doing my best to keep up. That's the right. only um, And I think it's, it's, it's not just for exam, it's for every library vendor, right? So um, the, the amount of testing actually goes up by, by a magnitude just because you have to test many, many different versions. Unfortunately, you can't, no, you don't have to test two versions, come on. Yeah. Get, 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 be honest, there's so, still a lot so, of companies so that run Java 6, so you can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm taking all, 11 and 12. All, all LTS and the latest, early, the latest. Yeah, and, 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 and five and six. And yeah, so you have to test all the LTS you, you want to support and the latest no, no, but, yes. but I mean, if you're a Maven maintainer, you want to get Maven ready at the point when JDK releases, which means you want to test it while that JDK version is being developed, which means you have to at least use early access thing. Yes. Now, if you use dependencies, they are in the same position that they have to track the early access releases and fix their box. And so if a particular project takes, I don't know, N days to stabilize for EA release. So if you have the dependency graph of that K, right? You have to have at least K times N days plus, to plus get vendors. this thing supported for plus, you. Plus JVM vendors. Yeah, um, yeah, it was JVM <laughs> vendors probably. Yeah. So uh, the, the thing is, it wasn't a problem when we released every three years, right? Yeah. And it is a problem when we release every six months. So what is the comfortable time then to release um, things? And, and we know that three years are kind of too long yeah. because there are many complaints about that. And we know that right now that library maintainers and tool yeah. maintainers say that six months is too short. What is the sweet spot then? Uh, no, basically you need to have uh, uh, a continuous delivery. <laughs> Wait. So, so y y y y yes, you're, you're complaining about the, the, the release cycle, but at least uh, the OpenJDK is moving faster than before. So we should be happy about this also, no? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> but I, I mean, on a six months release, there is not so much features that are included. Yeah, yes. There is some features that are developed on the long term and then drop into one release. But yeah. I mean, in terms of API, there is not so much difference between, for example, 10 and 11. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and, um, and there is something special with 9, which is a kind of when you have decided that we must have more security. <laughs> you have a lot of people that say, oh, you are breaking something. Let's break another thing at the same time. So it, that's why you have in eight uh, Jigsaw and at the same time the removal of all Java EE modules. Because nine. Uh, in nine, sorry, in nine. It's <laughs> because you, you want, you want uh, uh, people to pay the price once. But at the same time, it's a very bad strategy because it means that people will stop for one of the problem. And, yeah. and I think the adoption of 11 will take a long time. Yeah, so, so the migration from 8 to 9 is certainly a traumatic experience. And so you are uh, inevitably will project the same kind of pains from migrating from 8 to 10 and from 10 to 11, which is not much harder. I, I remember myself when I, I was migrating some of the internal projects from um, 8, from 9 to 10 or something like that, when you discover the JXB dependency thing. And you just, you, you see the stack trace saying that there is no JXB dependency and you think to yourself that you have leave, you had to leave through all this jigsaw mess all over again for this migration, and then you realize it's actually this the uh, like four lines in your POM file which just brings in the JXB dependencies. So there is kind of psychological term 
uh, just, there. Just, so fast releases means smaller changes. Just saying the Jax B line should be there for years. Yeah, and, and, then, yeah, and then you blame yourself for believing that JXB would be GDK forever, yeah. I'm pretty happy that JAXB is not in the... <laughs> I, I mean, um, in the opposite, we now have tools like Jlink that enable you to generate your own GDK, which has some very, very... Uh, it means in terms of security, for example, if you don't use an XML parser, you don't care if there is a hole in, a, in this parser. Which doesn't complicate text uh, you know, which doesn't complicate test metrics at all, right? Um, <laughs> it, it depends on one new test. Yeah, that's why you have a CI for testing on all... Right, uh, but, I mean, but the problem is, so, you have, as I said, there is a lot of companies that are still using Java 5 and 6 and it, it hurt my soul. I was the one at Hazelcast that always voted for we have to stay Java 6 because we have banking customers doing that. So it, you, you said you're, you're, you're going to support, well, 11 and 12. So for, for a real library vendor that actually makes money, it is most of the time at least 6, sometimes even 5. Hazelcast yeah. dropped 5, thankfully. Um, you have 9. 11, you have 12, you have the latest it, release, it, whatever it, it is, it, it, and it, then it, you it, have at least Azul, IBM, you have Hotspot itself, so Oracle, or, or OpenJDK, um, you might have, uh, what was it, o OpenT, no, what was it? Uh, OpenG9? No, 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 no the, the Red Hat, Ice-T, Ice Ice yeah. you might still have that. Um, so imagine, yeah, imagine your, your, your matrix of tests and how long they actually run. Yeah, but um, uh, in a sense, you, you are uh, delivering an application without the GDK. And I think it's far easier. That's why I've talked about Jlink and uh, Docker container. Per perhaps I'm spoiled. I mean, I can use this kind of tech. But I can't put a library into Jlink. So, but thank God we have still have GCK and TCK. So yeah, I don't think you really need to test against all vendors for at least correctness part, unless you are messing with SunSafe and all of a sudden discover the structure of word you know OOP headers is different in different VMs. But you're then you're unsafe. You're 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 playing risky. But but, but you don't know before you test, right? So so here here is here's a real story. We in Hazelcast, I mean, I'm not talking about the some unsafe messing parts, right? Standard stuff. Um, we actually had a failing test that only happened on J9 in version 6 something. I was looking into that, like, why the hell does only this version fail? I couldn't reproduce it locally. So, because when I downloaded J9, it was a newer version of this JDK 6. And it turned out that there is actually, well, there was a bug in. Um, in, in concurrent hash map of J9 that when you returned all the values, you actually not got a frat safe version. So if you changed it underneath, it actually changed the array and you had null elements in the array. I was like... So, yeah. Um, but it's... Um, at, at the same time, uh, what we are seeing, which help, I, uh, actually is... Uh, Google has migrating to OpenGDK, I mean for Android. Um, uh, IBM has migrating to OpenGDK for OpenG9 since 8, I think. And all the other uh, um, uh, GDK use OpenGDK as their b basis. But, but so that you is have just less the class library. Tests. That is just the class library. So we just the class library right, so that for, for IBL. Right. So that yeah. will probably won't make a, make a difference. Right. So hopefully we won't see a bug like that anymore. But you still have the underlying infrastructure or the underlying actual virtual machine, which is different, and it might behave different because yeah. it's a specification. A specification is not hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, but it, it was or it, it it was already the case before. Yeah, it be, and the nature of this complaint is what? Is that having multiple vendors for GTK no, no, is bad? Shoot them. Shoot them. 
No, no, it's 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 it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have multiple vendors. Yeah. It's just he said it's it's easy to test. And I was like, oh, no, well, it's not. Uh, because well, sure, you have a whole it, yeah, it will require of yeah, resources. Yes, yeah. Yeah, there are multiple vendors. You probably won't test for those vendors that your customers use. Yeah, that's it. It sucks to be paid for support. Yes, I know. Yeah, you don't have. Yeah, you have all this money that you can spend somewhere. And instead, you have to run, you know, 32 by 32 test metrics in your your new system. Yeah, um, but but still, the as Remy says, the the trend for convergence towards Open GDK is clear. So the the chance that you will experience um, it's the it's the one thing to run five JVMs in your test metrics and just say that green, 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 green results everywhere. And it's the other thing that ha to have s very different JDKs out there with their own different set of, set of bugs. So if those things converge to open GDK, the chance that you will have twice amount the bugs from twice amount of testing, twice amount of tested JDKs is lower, right? And that's, I think, uh, Remy's point is just if you share the significant part of the code base, that means that you will have less bugs exposed, even though you are testing and supporting more GDKs. I would also add that this is this if if it is a problem, that it's only a problem for like large framework develop, uh, frameworks or commonly used libraries, because for most developers. They just, they know where they will be deploying. They are uh, choosing the vendor once they deploy that. Maybe when they want to switch, they will test another vendor and, you know, after all tests are green, they switch. But overall, they don't really have to test against the metrics because they control, they control the deployment environment. If you control the deployment, you only test for what's in that deployment. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, deploying an application is always far, far, far easier uh, I would, I would than a library. I, I would say they, they rely on the vendor of the libraries to test that for them and to make sure that it actually works. So it's, it's nice to say, yeah, as a developer using libraries, I don't have to care for that. But you're just pushing the responsibility, right? Yeah. I go. And on that sad note. <laughs> so. so I think this session was organized by four people with questions and I was wondering are all those questions answered and I think so the answers uh, uh, the questions are answers to, uh, to some extent I'm surprised to hear that no one else is actually doing the migrations <laughs> So I'm feeling alone a little bit, <laughs> but um, okay, that's that's the answer. Then I get, I'm, I'm not impressed, <laughs> but I have to accept it. <laughs> yeah, I guess it goes back to what Robert was saying is about it should just be a flip of the switch uh, version number, but you need the infrastructure changes in place, and that's going to be a departmental decisions and and stuff. Uh, for my question about the the future of Java on Android, I guess we are under the impression that OpenJDK will be used, but does, I'm not sure if anyone really knows. Um, for the, the actual JDK support of Android, so it's either it's JDK 6 or 8 right now, so yeah, it could be OpenJDK or their own Google vendor of OpenJDK, who knows? But yeah. Maybe yeah, as a final word, I could say that uh, to get the, to the metaphor of Cinderella story, uh, we all agree that migrating from JDK 8 to 9 is uh, like uh, smashing pumpkin. <laughs> right, so go wrap up. I think we're out of time anyways. Yeah, we have a few more minutes, but uh, that sounds like a a relative wrap up itself, so I don't know if there's any more coffee. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks very much.